Hello again, everybody. This is Marcus Mackey from SlingingDirt.com. Um, I go by SpongeZilla on there. Um, we're going to follow up with our final portion of our tutorial. And in order to get this one kick-started, I'm going to fire up Adobe Photoshop um, and explain a little bit of what we're about ready to do. Um, as you know, in the past tutorials, we took an object from Adobe Photoshop that we created that was vector and exported it from Photoshop into Illustrator. Then we took it in Illustrator, cleaned it up a little bit, added some strokes using the offset path command, um, added a drop shadow using um, basic simple copy and paste behind technique. Um, then we used Pathfinder's Unite tool to unite those shapes together. Um, and as I'm about to show you, now that Photoshop is open, I'm going to open up our vector shapes. As you can tell, I have both of them done this time. Um, the gray is a little bit different in color because I made it a little lighter. I'm going to show you how to take one of these numbers, in this case, this one, <laughs> since it's the one we've been working on all along, and I'm going to copy it into Photoshop. So let's get started. So we're going to open this up. As you can tell, I have the two groups like I showed you in the last technique, and we're going to select um, from this group, I'm going to choose that outer shape, and we're going to do a simple copy, just like you would normally edit Command C on the Mac, Control C on the PC, same basic process. We're going to go into Adobe Photoshop. We're going to create a new file. When it comes up with the dialog, as you're going to see, it's empty to follow for a second. It shows clipboard as the option. It's really kind of a neat thing that uh, these programmers do. Enough to know that that's the exact shape. I'm going to use that set of sizes to help me define a new shape because what we're going to do when we get done, obviously, is to have both the right and left hand side numbers available. Um, background contents, transparent, basically just means it's going to be transparent behind what we do, which will have that nice checkerboard effect that we're all used to. Um, if you want to, you can name it right now. So our file will be known as Pullman 27. <clears throat> and then once we have that set up, I'm just going to click OK and I'll create a new, uh, new object. Obviously the sizing is not exact, um, but when I get done, I'll just use one of our little tools over here called crop and just crop it to size. Okay, so we have a layer, that's our first layer to work with. And I'm just gonna start pasting in. Now, when I created, I created kind of in a top-down approach. So this was the first layer we started with, then this layer, then this layer, then this layer. In this case, we're copying backwards because we're gonna layer it just the way it's gonna be visible and our top layer will be that one, which is gonna be the foremost visible. So we've got that one copied. I'll go back in and I'm just going to paste it in. Now it's going to, when I do the paste command, it brings up this little dialog and says paste. And it gives you a number of options. Um, if you were going to copy this entire thing to a skin and you didn't want to do any color editing outside of Illustrator with it, um, a simple technique might be to use Smart Object to start with. In our case, um, and the cool thing about smart objects are is that if you do any edits in Illustrator, if you want to edit the shape, um, it'll reflect those shapes after you've edited them in Illustrator within Photoshop. In our case, though, since I'm going to use this as a potential that I can save it, and if I want to, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to post this on Sling it or not, it may very well end up being something that's downloadable. I like to do a lot of my stuff, as anyone well knows, in Vector and post it for download. So what I'm going to use is shape layer. When I choose shape layer, it pastes it in and uses the foreground color. Now, unlike Illustrator where you can edit it afterwards in Photoshop in order to edit the colors, it's a little backwards in terms of interface, um, depending on what your preference are. Um, you have to go in and edit it afterwards. But in our case, since I started off with black, that's kind of where we wanted to go with in the first place. So we're good for now. We go back into Illustrator again and select our next layer, which is the gray layer. As you can see, I'll move it back over so you can see. The gray layer is copied, or selected. I'm going to copy it. I'll come back in over here. Now, before you paste in, unlike Illustrator where we just pasted it in and changed the color afterwards, 
once again, I'm going to go in, change our color, which doesn't affect this layer like it would in Illustrator. And I'm going to paste in. And once again, it gives us the option, or it gives us our dialog, shape layer selected, I'm going to click OK. It's not perfectly lined up. Um, that's not anything really to worry about. We can take care of that when we're done. We're going to go back in and select our next layer to copy. And I'm going to copy the red layer. We go back into Photoshop, change our color to bright red, layer. Go back to Illustrator, select our final black layer for that set of numbers. Copy, change our color to black, paste in, shape layer, boom. Now we have all those all put together. I'm going to create our group. Our group in this case has a folder icon, unlike Illustrator some of the nuances and the differences between the two programs. And I want to create this one as number 27. And this is going to be for the left hand side. So I'll do number 27 left. We're going to select these three layers, which are the top three. And since they're not perfectly aligned with the drop shadow, I'm going to take them and start off with first. We have these controls up here. I'm going to align them centered line them that way and then I'm going to take them and move them so that they're lined up. And there you go. Pure and simple. We've got it all copied back in. None of the shapes are currently within the folder. We're going to select them, move them into our folder, say indent, close the folder, and we're done. You can go in then in the next process, copy the other set of numbers in, and you'll have both sets of numbers within Photoshop. And the advantage of vector, as always, unlike a bitmap, bitmap image, I can choose scale. I can manipulate the image and make it wider. And it doesn't chunk up or anything like it normally would in um, using uh, bitmap graphics, where things that get a really chunky edge. Um, vector's advantage, pure and simple, is that these edges are comp uh, computed by the, the computer itself. And that's the reason why they have a very nice clean edge to them. So that's our tutorial, uh, our final tutorial for this series. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot. And I hope to see a lot more work from you guys using um, paths, using compound uh, paths to create shapes, using offset paths to create strokes that have mitered edges, and creating drop shadows. Enjoy. Hopefully I have some more tutorials for you again here real soon. Thanks. Bye.